One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, <clears throat> four, five, six. So if we use the formulas that we just did for uh, case two, um, we're going to um, see how they apply to an actual example. Now here's a situation where the company Adam Enterprises has an EBIT of $74,000 a year forever, cost of equity is 12%, and debt is 7 and the company is financed fully by equity, so it's unlevered, and it says assume case two of the model and 35% tax rate. And we're required to calculate four different things. Uh, the current value of the company, the value if they borrowed 125000 and the cost of equity and the cost of capital under the new structure where they borrow some money. So I find the simplest thing to do in these types of things is to, is to write down the known. Uh, so we know that EBIT is 74000 a year as a perpetuity forever. And we also know that the unlevered cost of equity is 12%. So the reason we know that is because cost of equity is 12, the company has no debt, so it's unlevered. Uh, RD, which is a cost of debt, is 7%, and the tax rate is 35%. So the first part is a straightforward formula. So the value of an unlevered firm, if it has a perpetuity, the same amount of income forever, EBIT, uh, is EBIT times 1 minus the tax rate divided by the unlevered cost of equity. <coughs> So EBIT is 74,000 times 1 minus 0.35 divided by 0.12. says that in this scenario, uh, the company should be worth $400,833. Okay, so that's the value of the unlevered company. And the remaining three parts says, what happens if you add some debt? Now, we know the value of the company in case two is going to go up if you add debt because because uh, it's impossible to go bankrupt, so it increases by the debt shield or the tax shield on the debt. Um, so the debt here is 125,000. So if we look at the levered value of equity, it's going to be the unlevered value which we just calculated plus the tax shield, which is debt times the tax rate. So that is 400,833 plus debt which was 125,000 that we're adding, times the tax rate of 35%. So the new value of the company increases to $444,583. So this, this increase is, is just really because of the, the tax shield, the benefit from uh, the interest deductions that we would get. And this assumes that that, that would stay forever as well. Okay, so that... Uh, at least conceptually makes sense because in case two, uh, the value should always increase as you add debt. Because if you remember, the goal was you would maximize the value of the firm by maximizing the, uh, the debt rate. So let's go to part three. So this one wants us to calculate the cost of equity of the levered firm. So we're given the cost of equity of the unlevered firm is 12%, but there's a formula for the levered equity. Now, even though there's no bankruptcy, a debt is, is, has no risk. Equity risk does go up as you add debt because equity gets placed behind the, uh, uh, the interest payment. So it's not the risk of bankruptcy, but it's the risk that the company might not make a profit and shareholders don't earn the same amount of profit. So the formula was given um, in the last tutorial. Uh, the levered cost of equity is the unlevered cost of equity, RU, plus... RU minus RD, which is a cost of debt, times your debt to equity ratio, times one minus the tax rate. So in this case, we have everything, except the value has changed now. The value we just calculated changed to 444,583, and the debt was 125,000. So we basically we use that as a plug to get what the equity value would be which uh, works out that uh, the equity value has to be uh, $319,000, uh, 583. Okay, so now we could use those figures to plug into that formula. Everything else we've been given. So the unlevered cost of equity is 12%, and we subtract out the bracket RU of 12% minus the cost of debt of 7% and multiply that by the debt-to-equity ratio of 125,000 in debt 
divided by the new value of equity of uh, 319,583. And then we multiply that by 1 minus the tax rate. So as a result, we get uh, 0.1327, which is 13.27%, which makes complete sense. It, it's a number that's higher than the uh, unlevered cost of equity of 12%. Um, the last part says calculate the weighted average cost of capital, and this is very straightforward. This is just uh, plugging in information that we've already figured out so far. Um, so the formula is debt over value, so the portion of the company financed by, financed by debt times the cost of debt after tax times the portion financed by equity times the levered cost of equity. So in this case, we've got all the info. The debt is 125000 the value of the company after uh, the debt was added was 444,583. Cost of debt was 7%, and 1 minus the tax rate of 0.35. And the equity is 319,583, and the value of the company is, uh, again, same, 444,583. And we just calculated the new levered cost of equity was 13.27%. So if we multiply all of that out, at the end of all of this, the company will have a new uh, weighted average cost of capital of 10.82% for, uh, for their level of financing.